Hey you guys, welcome back to another video. It is Shamira here and I am back with another video. And this video has been highly requested. I'm going to be sharing those websites and the links and all that stuff that's gonna help you guys with educating yourself or using this as like a self-study type thing. I'm not um, here to tell anybody that they should self-study and not, you know, do a course or go to school. I didn't go to school. I um, pretty much just trained myself, which might sound weird, but all I did was I did practice exams over and over and over again until I kind of got the concept of what was going on, making sure I paid attention to guidelines and all that stuff. And then once I landed my coding job, I had on the job training. So although I did not go to school, I did get proper training once I became a coder. And I feel like everybody is gonna need some type of training. What these websites are going to be for is for um, coders that are already you know, coding and they just want some more education or want to know where there's more information out there for anybody that's getting ready to take a course and they want to, you know, um do like a little prep or pre pre-game before the course starts i don't know and for those of you that are just interested in coding and you want to educate yourself before you go and spend money on a course or do any type of training make sure you guys check out the description box because the links will be down uh there and we are going to just jump right into this video thank you all for watching make sure you hit that subscribe button because i will have more videos like this um in the future, I don't know how long from now, but um, the more links and websites that I come up with or come across, I will be sharing with you guys to, you know, make sure you guys are aware of them. So again, thank you for watching and let's get into this video. Okay, so our very first website that we are going to be going out to is cms.gov and CMS stands for Centers, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. They oversee many federal health care programs, including those that involve health care information technology, such as the meaningful use of incentive programs for the electronic health records. Um, they are a federal agency that runs the Medicare, Medicaid and, and children's health insurance programs and the federally facilitated marketplace. So on their website. Okay, so on their website, we are going to go into the very first column here or ver very first tab, and we are going to go to Medicare, and then you want to scroll down until you get to coding. Now, there is a lot of information already given to you here, so feel free to click around and find information that you feel like you need to know or that you feel as though is going to be beneficial to you, but for this video, we are strictly going into coding and we want to go into the national correct coding initiative edits and then once you go into there you want to go into the ncci policy manual for medicare and the ncci stands for national correct coding initiative and this program was developed by cms so the very first pdf file that you'll have is the introduction to um, the NCCI policy. And this is going to be very, very beneficial to anybody that is just starting out in coding or maybe somebody that has been coding for a while and hasn't come across this information before. It is going to be very, very helpful. And um, I am one of those people that I love to just educate myself and find information to read. So definitely come out here and um, look at this NCCI manual. I believe in here, they tell us that the purpose of the NCCI was to prevent improper coding um, errors. And I think that actually might be in chapter one. I might be getting ahead of myself. So chapter one is for general correct coding policies for the national correct coding initiative policy. And I think in here is where, oh no, this, this chapter is where they go into details for correct coding. And um, they go into details about evaluation and management, um, medical and surgical packages, modifiers, modifier indicators, 
And actually, let's just click the modifiers and modifier indicators because I know some people have questions about modifiers and when should we report a modifier. So they go into um, details about when to append modifiers. They tell you about anatomic modifiers, global surgery modifiers. And then they even go in depth of about what um, the modifiers are. So modifier 76. Um, they'll go into details about modifier 22, 25, 58. When you should re be reporting these modifiers. They even um, come up with scenarios. So like they'll tell you about um, procedures and when you should append modifiers or the 58 modifier when you shouldn't use it. Um, modifier 59 and um, they mentioned the X modifiers that um, we should be using rather than modifier 59. So a lot of information is out here. Um, come out here, read it, educate yourself because it's going to be um, good to know. So these other chapters here are chapters that um, relate to your CPT manual. So chapter two is the anesthesia section. So if we have any anesthesiology or anesthesia coders, um, chapter two would be something that you guys should print out because this manual will be very, very helpful. I am an obstetrics and gynecology coder, so I have chapter seven and I have the manual printed out and I keep it at my desk for scenarios where I have questions or I just might want to see something that's in the manual that I'm struggling on. I don't know. I just have it at my desk um, in case I need it. And chapter seven is for the urinary, which I also do some urinary procedures for like... Um, what's it called, urodynamic studies. Um, I don't do any male genital um, procedures, but I do do female genital and maternity and delivery services. So that's another reason why I keep this manual at my desk. Let me just go in and see what they talk about related to, um, let's see, some procedures. So like right here, they mention EMGs and... Let me see what else. Urethral catheters. When it says here, when urethral catheter, catheters or urethral dilation is necessary to complete a more extensive procedure, the, ure, ure, the urethral catheter dilation is not separately reportable. So you guys know in some operative reports, they mentioned that they place a uh, catheter. Well, we all know that that is inclusive to the um, procedure that you were billing for. So you would not bill that separately. That is pretty much telling you that here as well. So if anybody's ever questioning if they should be billing something else during a procedure, check your manual and see if they tell you if you should be billing it or not, um, because it should be in here. So that is one website that I wanted to share with you guys. I think Nope, we are going to stay on this website and I'm just going to back out back to Medicare. So we are back at the Medicare tab here. And now I'm going to scroll down to where it says coding and then ICD-10. So the National Correct Coding Initiative edits are going to be very um, helpful for anybody that wants to learn information for like their CPT or procedure coding, modifier coding, um, coding edits, things like that. But then we also have our ICD-10. So let's go into ICD-10 because there are going to be two training, um, online web trainings, I guess you can say, that you can get for free. And, um, what you are going to do is after you go into ICD-10, you want to go to Medicare fee for service provider resources. And once you click on that, you will see here, it says diagnosis coding using the ICD-10-CM, and this is web-based training. So once you click on that, you will then have, um, well, multiple things to click on, but I want you to pay attention to the two that I have here in purple. And the very first one is the Medicare billing for form CMS-15. And the CMS-15 uh, claim form is for Part B or part B coding or physician billing. 
So if you guys are not um, hospital billers and you guys are doing coding for the physician, your claims will be on the 1500 form. So this little web training video, it says learn professional claims requirements, claims processing actions, and how to identify aspects of paper and electronic claims. When you click on it, it'll tell you click here to begin the course. And it did say that this was a 50 minute type course. So this is very, very um, beneficial. Like I feel like this is um, an easy way for you to get educated on CMS, on the uh, CMS claim form 1500 and um, how to, you know, read a 1500 form and all that. So let me go back. And here is the next one that I want to click on and is the diagnosis coding using the ICD-10 CM. And it also says click here to begin the course. I'm not going to click on it because I'm not about to take it right now, but I most likely will come back and see what this um, training has to offer because I love to educate myself and learn new things. And I've never, um, seen these videos before I just came across them as I was looking for information for you guys so I found these two and I um, made notes of them to come back and watch them when I have the free time so now I think we are done with CMS and oh nope one more thing <laughs> um another thing that I wanted to point out was right here where it says 2021 ICD-10 CM if you click on that and come down here, you will get the 2021 coding guidelines. So for anybody that does not have their ICD-10 CM books yet, you can get the guidelines right here for free. And I'm telling you, if you are looking to take your CPC exam, they are going to be testing you on if you are paying attention to what the guidelines are telling you to do. And if you are following, if you are following them as you are choosing your codes, because um, sometimes they will try and put codes together that you are not supposed to build together and your guidelines will tell you to not do that. Um, let's say, for instance, you have a situation where the patient, there's a patient that has a bunch of symptoms, but um, the provider finds out that we have, that the patient has like the flu or something or what's a more specific one. Um, let me think. Uh Let's say she has elevated blood pressure and then we find out that she um, has hypertension. So you would not code that R code. I think it's like R03.0 for elevated blood pressure. You are going to go with hypertension. And um, they go into details about that in the guidelines. I can't remember. I think it might be like principal diagnosis codes or maybe it's under signs and symptoms here. So read your guidelines. I know it's a lot of information to read, but as you are going through your questions or your practice exams, if the information is in your guidelines, read your guidelines before you go and choose the code that you think it is because the guidelines might tell you to go somewhere else. So you never know. Always read your guidelines before you choose um, a diagnosis code or a procedure code, whatever. Read your guidelines. So... Now we are done with CMS's um, website and we can go over to uh, Novitas Solutions. So over here, you will see that I have the option to choose jurisdiction L or jurisdiction H. And I am in Pennsylvania, so obviously I'm going to go with L. If you are in these other states over here, you will go with H. Or if you are in, what is this, like Delaware, Maryland. Um, what's this one? Crap. What state is this right next to us? Is it? No, this is Delaware. That's Maryland. Uh, hang on. Uh, that is, oh, <laughs> that is New Jersey. So if you click on this one, oh, and it tells me right here. Delaware, Maryland, Jer New Jersey, Pennsylvania, or Washington, D.C. And H is the states here. So we're going to go in jurisdiction L. And where do, where do I want to go 
for you guys first. Okay, so we are going to go to education and training. And, um, oh, I did want to say, if you guys are in the other states, like, you see how Florida was not on here, or um, New York was not on here, Virginia's not on here. If you guys are a part of those states, I, I mean, if you guys are a part of those states, I really don't know where you should go for this information. Um, I'm thinking you, I, I don't know. I don't know where you guys should go. I don't want to tell you where to go. I'm just going where I know to go. So hopefully you guys are all within these states and you guys can get this information because um, different states have different um, policies and uh, different government, uh, what is it, like government policies that you guys have to follow. So I can only give the information that I know for the state that I'm in. So if you're in Pennsylvania, good for you. Keep following along. <laughs> um, so education and training is where I'm going to go. And then I'm going to, I believe it's on demand training. And then you'll see that we have some webinar recordings that you can watch for free. And the one that I re recommend you watch are this one here. Here, where it says 53121 Medicare Billing Basics for Part B. And this it says this webinar will review the Medicare rules for completing and submitting a claim and provide informative recommendations for how to avoid common claim denials and rejection reasons. So I have not watched this video yet, but I made note of it and I will come back and watch it because this will be uh, informative for me to know and to learn. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And what else did I have over here? There is some training videos that you can watch for free. And it says that you do not need to have a Novitas Learning Center account in order to watch them. These are some quick videos for those of you that um, might be interested on um, claim corrections or Part B fee schedules, single code search and download tools. Uh, understanding, well, I don't think that one's necessary. Was there any more that I seen? Um, let's see here. No, I didn't see anything else. So just the ones that were up near the top. So claim corrections in Novatosphere or Part B fee schedule, single code search and download tool. And these, and these videos are very, very short. So you will not be here all day. So my next thing that I have is there also are some online training courses, but you would have to create an account in order to review those um, trainings. I have an account. Um, and I mentioned that in a previous video that I did. So if you guys want more information and you are within those states that were um, discussed for jurisdiction L, either DC, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, or PA, um, you can sign up to become a member or to create an account. And then as well as for those of you that were in jurisdiction H. So um, I'm trying to see here, cause I think I had one more spot or one more thing to go. Yep, right here. My very last thing that I wanted to mention was evaluation and management. So they have an ex a section for evaluation and management. So your office e &Ms, your hospital e &Ms, your whatever. They have e &M guidelines and coding resources. So um, let's click on that. And you'll see that they have 1995 guidelines and 1997 guidelines. They go into details on the um, four by four exam. I don't think that you guys are gonna be tested on the four by four on your guys' exam, but that has to um, go with the physical exam during an office or um, hospital visit. Um, they talk about prolonged physician services, observation services, a lot of information is out here for somebody to, you know, just come out here and want to educate themselves. There was another thing. Oh, the new 2021 Office and Outpatient e &M revisions. That's also here uh, for those of you that want information on that. And yeah, that's 
pretty much it. So those are the two websites that I have for you guys for right now. CMS.gov and Novatas Solutions. That is where I go pretty much for um, whenever I'm looking for more information. As I come up with more websites and information um, to share with you guys, I will have more videos coming, but I wanted to get those two out to you. So again, thank you all for watching this video and I hope you guys subscribe and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.